Hi everyone, this is Terry AB5K from Holland, Texas. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at the new release of AR Cluster, and in this demo we're going to look at the I.O. devices, how to configure all the input and output devices of the cluster. So we'll get started. We'll open the Config menu, and we'll open Setup, and we'll look at the uh, screen that launches, which is a configuration screen. You can see there's several main categories that can be set up. For the most part, we're going to be concentrating on I.O. devices. But let's look at uh, caches, and we'll go down and look at the DX cache. And these are some of the settings that can be tuned by the operator. Now, at this point, I don't recommend tuning anything because uh, we've done a lot of tuning here uh, to get this thing uh, kind of optimized for the skimmer spots. But, uh, for example, if you don't want the, uh, the cluster to automatically compress your databases every night, you can turn this off. Uh, this controls the caches, how much cache and memory we keep in minutes. Um, that spots. On the database side, this is the days of data we currently keep, the max number of spots, the, uh, the frequency we, we use for the uh, dupes, and uh, the dupe time logic. And there's some other things like uh, some of the content, logbook of the world. Uh, this being true means we automatically download new logbook of the world content every night. And this option being true means that as soon as that log file is downloaded, AR Cluster will recognize the file change and pick up and reload the new file. So there's a lot of uh, stuff that goes on in the caches and a lot of parameters that can be adjusted. But for the most part, just uh, keep those as is. And let's go look at uh, uh, a few other things real quick. Uh, configuration, this is a scheduled maintenance hour. So at 8 o'clock uh, Zulu in the middle of the night in the US, we take the databases offline one by one and compress those. That's all done on a background low priority thread and it doesn't impact the performance at all. There is uh, some log file uh, stuff, uh, login, and spot processing things that can be set. But in I.O. devices, we basically have two types of I.O. devices. We have a server device where other people connect into us, and we have client devices where we connect outbound to other people. So let's look at the server. And we'll click on the list, and there'll be a little button launch on the right side of the screen. We'll pick that guy, bringing up, and let's resize this thing so we can uh, get a little better uh, picture of what's going on. Now, uh, there are three of uh, the servers that are, they come configured and they are enabled uh, when you set up your cluster. So you shouldn't have to do much at all here. Uh, this is the Telnet server. This is where the users are going to connect to you. And it's set up to default to port 7373. And uh, you can control, uh, if you don't need it, you can turn it off. Double click there and this will go to false. You can defeat it. Uh, the, the other thing you probably want to do on this is it has all the sign-in messages and the error messages. You can come over here to uh, this area right here and change uh, the Holland, Texas to your specific uh, location. Other than that, you shouldn't have to uh, 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 change this at all. We, we do do use macros, so a uh, node call is uh, the call sign of the license of the node, and CRLF is carriage return line feed. There are two other server uh, instances that are used, and one this is an AR Cluster 6 node server. It runs at 3607. And this is where other AR Cluster nodes will connect into you. And there's also an AR Cluster user server at 3608. This is where the AR Cluster users will connect in. Uh, that's the um, AR, AR Cluster client application. So we'll say OK on that. And uh, we'll look at client. now. I ship with no client devices set up, so you're going to have to do a little work here and set up your own clients. However, I've went through for this demo and I've kind of canned up three kind of typical ones that might be used. And uh, 
so we'll go we'll go through each of those. The first one is let's set up a simple Telnet connection to K3LR. So the type of this would be Telnet, and we set it to port 23, which is the standard Telnet connection. In the IP address, we set k3lr.com. We're going to enable this guy, set him to true. The description can be anything you want, or you can leave it blank, but this is something to remind you of what this connection is all about. I typically like to say the type, so this is a Telnet connection, and then the destination to K3LR. Uh, the connect to, put in K3LR, and connect as, here I'm using AB5K-10. So the next, uh, the next uh, client outbound connection, we're going to do a, a passive connection, and this is the AR cluster version 4 protocol. We're going to do that over to AB5K. So our type here is ARC4 passive. We use the AR cluster 4 passive port 3606. Uh, this is another machine running here in the shack, uh, 192.168.0.1. We're going to enable that guy, set a description again. We're connecting to AB5K, and we're connecting as AB5K-1. And the final uh, client that we're going to configure uh, is a reverse beacon. So this time in our type, be, there's a drop box here. We're going to select reverse beacon client. Now, the reverse beacon server we're connecting to is at telnet.reversebeacon.net. It's on port 7000. We're going to enable it to true. Put a description in. Uh, a connect to, which can be about anything because this is used internally. I use uh, RAVBCN. And then we're connecting as AB5K.8. So we're going to say OK. And down at the bottom, we're going to click the Save button to save these changes. And we're going to restart AR Cluster, and we'll be right back. OK, we're back. And you can see at this point now in our Connections tab, we can see the three connections that we provisioned. And they're all green. And uh, and some of, here's our description and our IP and our ports. And over on the right side, we have an uptime for each connection. And we have a little bit of, of a way of tracking some, some things to determine the quality of the connection, how many DX spots per hour we're getting, and how many are dupes that we're getting. So uh, we could tell if, if we're getting some unique spots we haven't got before, or if we're connecting to some, po some point in the network where we're just getting a whole bunch of dupes that aren't doing us any good and slowing down our processing a little bit. So. The next thing, let's go look at a, a Telnet port and see uh, how this thing's running. So I can do a view, and I can do localhost Telnet, and I'm going to connect in as AB5K-5. And you can see we've connected in. We got the sign-on message. We see a bunch of spots starting to come in. Uh, the ones with the pound sign next to them are all skimmer spots. So we got a good uh, good sense here from a Telnet side that our Telnet server is working and we're pulling in all these spots. Now, one last thing I want to show you is people are going to ask, where did my monitor window go? Monitor window is now view log file. And this uh, thing pops on the screen. And I'll try and get it sized where we can look at it just a little bit. But this is this is the log file. And there's a lot of engineering things in here uh, in, in timing. So you can see the timing of these spots. And you can see they're, they're being processed very fast on the node. And you can also see a lot about what's going on in the software in the background. So that's about it. I'm about out of time on this one. Uh, that's about it for AR Cluster Server, how to set it up, kind of monitor it, and, uh, and uh, test and watch it the log files. So this is Terry, AB5K. We'll see you in a future webcast or on the air, SEM3.